G'day everyone, I'm Ross. I'm uh, building a 40 foot production composite catamaran from a mold I purchased a couple of years ago. And uh, as you can see, I'm in a world of trouble here with a lot of uh, things going on. I've got bulkheads and rooms and compartments and bed frames and modules in the works. And you know, this whole channel is all about building this from scratch so if you like this channel please give it a like don't forget to subscribe click that notification bell very important and you'll get my notifications every time i put up a video and uh and you know come and join me on life on the hulls guys and we'll have a great time so i'm back in the shop today i spent all day yesterday servicing my spray gel coat machine that machine has a lot of seals and a lot of uh you know small intricacies that need to be dealt with prior to a day or a couple of days of spraying so it's worth it tearing it all the way down and rebuilding it to making sure that everything's working fine and i've got it working absolutely perfectly it hasn't been used for about six or seven months i only use it for big jobs because the amount of preparation required but it means that i can just lay flat sheet after flat sheet after flat sheet with minimal impact and I've just got to uh, to make sure that it is perfectly clean before I start so that I can get a, a really good run in it. So part of laying up, you know, eight or nine of these big flat sheets in you know a week is, is just getting that machine humming and running absolutely perfectly. So today I'm gonna lay up uh, both sides of these uh, 10 millimeter H80 foam core sheets. These will form some of the road positions within the, uh, within the catamaran. A lot of the smaller internal walls are just just simply one 10 mil layer of, uh, of foam with a, a 300 CSM on each side and also a layer of 600 double bias on each side because they are semi-structural but uh, they're more partitions than, uh, than physical bulkheads in this case. So just to remind you that this flat sheet that I use actually has perforations every 45 millimetres and these perforations actually act like claws that hold the resin and, and adhere the resin to the actual sheet. And I've built the entire boat like this uh, by doing this. You know, I could actually, if I was uh, wanting to really cut weight out of this, I could actually vacuum bag on a, on a smooth surface table. And that's why I'm using form ply because if I rip this plastic off, I've then got a perfectly smooth surface that I could wax up uh, and, and physically vacuum it down onto it. And I'm gonna be doing that later on as I head into this build when I'm doing uh, gel coated sheets. I'll be gel coating the entire surface, uh, then laying up the foam onto the actual form ply itself. So for this now, we've basically got a layer of 300, a layer of 600, and a layer of peel ply. And that gives me that beautiful sort of almost semi-fared surface to, uh, to then work with with all my robes. Uh, four hours later. I'd serviced the gun, gave it a really good uh, clean service yesterday, did all the seals and everything on the actual pumping mechanism. And then as I was just about to start spraying, I'm suited up, I've got the mask on, I've got everything on, the inevitable's happened. Uh, my catalyst pump is leaking like a bloody bleeding dog. And the catalyst was actually dripping out. I had to work out where the actual leak was, so it instigated a three hour tear down of this pumping arrangement. I'll just show you what I've actually done. I didn't actually film the, the procedure that I had to go through. It took a bit of working out because I've never actually had to pull that apart. The catalyst is a fairly lubricating substance on its own, but there was a seal that had obviously blown inside this pump here and uh and it's a very messy job because you've got catalyst going everywhere so you've got to drain and reflux the catalyst out of the system uh first and then remove that complete pumping mechanism there we've got an accumulator tank which stops any lag of catalyst being delivered uh similar to an accumulator on a water system but deep down inside here there's a small spring-loaded delrin washer and clearly uh, a couple of the o-ring seals there's a pump this this pump shaft runs down inside here and right at the bottom there's a small section that has a spring and a ceramic ball and then a valve and that valve in fact has an o-ring on it and that o-ring had flattened that much that obviously it was letting water uh, sorry catalyst leak through and it was coming out of these holes here in the side of this um this this screw in uh, section at the top here so what i had to do is remove this circlet here and remove the whole innards of the entire pump and it's quite a detailed thing there's probably about 15 moving parts in there a lot of delrin washers and some small spring-loaded delrin washers similar to what's in the large pump over here but what it uh 
what it entailed was a, a little bit of gouging and unfortunately I've damaged the one that came out. Luckily I had one spare but now I've got to find out what it is. So I'm going to put a picture of that up here now. If anyone knows what this bloody thing's called, please enlighten me because I'm going to need to order them and, and get it in as quick as possible because I don't want that going on me again. So I'm ready now to start the system and uh, and go through all that process again. Just make sure that everything is really in, uh, in good order. I've set it back at one and a half percent because it's pretty warm. It's about 22 degrees in here today and I'm ready to go again. So yeah, three or four hours is pretty much a whole day's work just fixing this. But the great thing is it is now done and hopefully it'll give me another two or three years of service before I need to do it again. So part of the preparation is not only getting the machine working, making sure your resin's topped up, making sure you've got your catalyst, your MEKP in the machine. Um, part of the preparation is making sure you've got a good clean workshop. I spend a lot of time vacuuming, cleaning this. It is a very hard environment to keep clean. So the, the key is you put things away, not down. And that way you're sort of minimizing the amount of effort you're going to have to do to get started again. Um, basically, these flat sheets are such an easy process. It takes me about an hour to knock over two on each side. So one hour each side. But you know, the benefits of that is I'm getting ahead very quickly because then when I come to cut out my sections, I can just go for it. Putting the bunny suit on, as much as I hate wearing these things, without this on, I'm gonna get aerosol resin, catalyzed resin on my skin. That is not a good scene. Uh, obviously gloves, I double glove. As much as, uh, as much as it's a waste of gloves, I'm ensuring there's no penetration of any of these chemicals into me. The hat goes off, the mask goes on, the hood goes on. I've got extraction fan with filtration. I've got it all in my shop. And the real important thing is that you consider this before you start spraying up. I used to spray without uh, wearing a suit and I found that I'd have droplets of the shit in my hair and my arms. You can't have that. It's simply not good. It's not good practice and it's certainly not good for my longevity. So luckily I only did it for a short time. Hopefully there's no long-term effects. But yeah, two sheets today, Sunday Arvo, gonna knock it over. I've got all my cloth cut, I've got my resin ready, I've got the catalyst, I've got the gun prepared. All I need to do is put the mask on and just get to work. So let's get into it, eh? Let's do it. My gun, external catalyst obviously, uh, basically set at one and a half percent. I've got 24 degrees in here right now, Celsius, and, uh, and about 70% humidity. So it's getting up in the range. I'm not real happy about that, so I'm gonna get it done pretty quickly and get out of here for the night. Right, so it's the next morning, given I started late yesterday because of the um, the catalyst issue I had with my machine, having to service that entire pump system. But now this this has gone off and it's uh, ready to, uh, to roll over again. So the important thing is, while it's still green, you don't want to distend or pull it out of shape. So when you're lifting it, you try to lift it in all corners rather than just um, pick it up and bend it to get it off the, off the plastic below. But the important thing is that it's turned in one piece and uh, you try not to affect the edges. I don't know whether you can see it there, but there's a lot of penetration through the, uh, through the perforations. Very important that that happens, that that perforation is filled with resin as it enables a lot of claws from the matting down into the foam to ensure that it has had good uh, good penetration through the pores and allows for more like a rivet or a claw arrangement that holds that in place. 
So I think it's pretty clear by now that boat building is not all about sundowners and uh, and white sandy beaches and clean, clear water. It's pretty hard work. And being set up like I am, I've got the perfect opportunity to get uh, good consistency with my substrates. And you can see me here peel plying these products. By doing that, I'm actually saving myself a hell of a lot of sanding. It gives me a good fared surface ready for uh, the final trim. And you know that's what I'm aiming for here is consistency and, and obviously a quality boat at the end of the day. So the trick is to make a batch of these. I'm doing about eight sheets. I'm gonna have a big pile of them and then I can just cut out my templates, cut out all of the petitions that I need. Rather than sort of setting up the gun, making two sheets at a time, you're better off to just do a complete run. Speeds up production, speeds up your uh, your efficiency and able to get things done a lot quicker actually on the job rather than staying here in the factory. Very important this time I use this cooler weather to nail these because later in the week we're gonna hit around 40 degrees again and uh, gonna be almost impossible to spray these up uh, without you know risking an injury to either myself or my equipment and the catalyzing is just rocket fast in those sorts of conditions so you don't want to be mixing around with that. Right so the road petitions in this boat are all uh, 10 millimeter uh, H80 foam with one layer of 300 CSM and a layer of 600 double bias on them. That's just, just to give them that uh, semi-rigidity I need to make uh, things like walls where we're going to have doorways, passageways, uh, and cupboards and shelving and things. I could probably go a little bit thinner on some of the uh, internal shelves and things, but I'm generally gonna use a lot of the offcuts. Now, the issue I have here is that uh, this piece here which is, was only a metre wide. Now, most um, most pieces of plywood and stuff that you buy these days in hardware shops is uh, 1.2 or 1,200 millimetres wide. And uh, in this case, because they're only a metre, they're around about 20 centimetres short. So you've got to butt join all this foam together. These are This is an, an off cut off a piece that I uh, used, obviously, to make another component somewhere in the boat. But, I've just cut these dead straight with a straight edge and I'm going to butt join these two together and that's going to form the main compartment uh, for the rear cabin and main robe partition and in fact it's going to have a nice doorway and everything in it but essentially you need to have a straight edge and a straight edge. Now when you're cutting uh, laminated foam like this particularly with a power saw or a skill saw you're going to get it chipping and it's going to actually reveal, and I'll show you closer in here, reveal uh, a lot of the fibre and edge. And, and in fact, just like when you're cutting chipboard or, uh, or melamine or anything. So the trick is to give it a light sand and get that back to fibre so that it'll, it'll then absorb and accept the resin again. So don't ever just sort of you know, glue these things together and think that yeah, it's going to be good enough. But this is going to be simply a, a 200 mil wide tape that's going to run straight down the middle here just with polyester and then I'll flip it over and do the other side and I'll peel apply the join so it's virtually invisible and ultimately I've made one one metre piece into 1.2 metre pieces which is how they should come. So the first thing I have to do is remove the peel ply. If you forgot to remove the peel ply, you'd be in a world of hurt when you uh, join them together and then it just falls apart because nothing sticks to this. Thing. So I'll remove the peel ply. remove it entirely because I want to keep it on the surface because as soon as we remove the peel ply what happens is contaminants, airborne dust, anything can actually get onto the surface and I want this as smooth as possible so that when I go to fair it or to add other uh, items to it and glass bits to it I don't have to be doing a, a heap of prep work so leave the peel ply as much as you can, reveal it back to the point where you've got working area and then you know leave it there. Okay, so that's a perfect mated surface. Um, the resin will fill the little slot, join the, the foam together and be probably about as good as the foam ever was. And simply laminate over the top with two strips of 600 gram uh, double bias and basically that's gonna be it. 
changed my mind. I'm going to put a layer of um, 300 CSM and then a layer of 600 double bias. Uh, there's just no reason to um, to have any more than that. So. So I think I've pretty much proven that this isn't rocket science. It's just all about good preparation and good technique, I guess, and having the right materials at the right time. Um, look, you basically feel your way as you go, but this isn't some dark art. Laminating is actually quite a simple process. It's, it's just all about being methodical and making sure that you follow, uh, I guess, a prescribed standard of practice, and, and that is basically using the correct uh, resin, the correct catalysts uh, for the conditions, and ultimately the right material and, and save time in the long run. Okay, so yesterday afternoon I put uh, two layers of glass on this panel that I've actually butt joined and uh, I'm going to actually rip the peel ply off just to check that it's nice and solid and then I should be able to flip it over and redo the second side of the laminate. Um, normally I'd leave the peel ply on, but this area here is actually going to be cut out and made into a doorway or a companionway for the rear cabin, so not that critical. And uh, neither is... You can see here there's a slight rise here. Um, but once again, this is actually going to be a doorway that's going to get cut out. I just needed the extra width to get the, the dead square center um, against that um, galley module. Now, remembering the glass is only on one side, so I don't want that butterflying and sort of flipping and breaking. So, I'm going to actually, it's as rigid as buggery. That is, you're never going to flip or break anyway. So, that's pretty, pretty good. All right. You can clearly see here, along the butt joint here, that there's a lot of penetration of resin. So that's a good thing. That means that the resin's actually worked its way into the slot and bonded the foam together. And then the extra piece of laminate over the top's gonna to deal with the, uh, with the butt joint and as strong as anything. It actually dawned on me a moment ago as I uh, watched myself sand and vacuum this piece of laminate, um, how, tedious it can be having to wade through a hundred gig of video every night to come up with 10 minutes of remotely interesting stuff for you guys to watch. I hope everyone's getting something out of this because uh, this is uh, probably more tedious than actually doing the laminating myself. But I do enjoy my work no matter what. And uh, you know, this is uh, a very pleasing thing to see this stuff start to come to fruition. Thanks for joining me for another week, guys. It's uh, it's been an interesting week this one for me because I was able to get that you know get that batch of work done and and it does take a lot of prep and I think that message is pretty clear. A couple of weeks ago, I asked a question when I was sailing on Sydney Harbour as to what the three lights were or the red lights were on top of the three masted schooner and I uh, had some pretty interesting comments come back. I won't elaborate on some of them because some of them were a bit a uh, bit risky, but uh, yeah, I think a lot of you actually got it correct and there was. There there was uh, some comments about having restricted draft and uh, and obviously uh, the correct answer in this case is is in fact uh, a mass over 150 feet are required to have red lights. Now Sydney Harbour is a low fly zone. We have a lot of seaplanes and in fact helicopters and, and the likes flying around that uh, around that area. Obviously um, they've got to warn them of, uh, of high masted boats and that schooner has some pretty big masts. It was pretty hard to see from the vision I gave you but at least it was there in any case. Um, thanks once again for anyone, everyone joining me. Now I've launched the composite shop uh, video. The first one's up there now. Uh, so if you pop over, there's a link here to the composite shop. Uh, first one is all about preparing and uh, and obviously readying a kayak mold for lamination and uh, and basically there's already five issues up on the uh, patron site for those that are uh, that are in the patron um, network there. However, if you're prepared to wait for them at the end of the day, they, they are going to roll out uh, three months after I actually launch them. So for those of you that are in the patron thing, you're actually getting them for free uh, three months early and, and obviously it's just going to roll on. So don't forget to subscribe to that channel because those um, notifications are going to come as I make them public and there's another one due in about three weeks time. So uh, starting to get some pretty interesting stuff there, uh, custom gel coating and, and obviously uh, laminating carbon reinforced product and uh, some little hints and tricks that really might help you along with your, uh, with your laminating. So 
plenty going on here. I'm doing a lot of research at the moment and, and I think that's uh, the key to my job here. I get home at night because Janet works in Sydney three nights a week. I've got plenty of time to sit here and uh, and do the research. I'm way through a plethora of uh, rather uninteresting laminating video to try to fast forward it and make it interesting for you guys. So thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Share it out and pop over to that Composite Shop channel and uh, don't forget to subscribe. I need to get those subscriptions up. And one thing that you probably don't realize is if you fast forward through our videos, all of us, myself, um, Onboard Lifestyle, uh, Building Brew Peg, um, Reese at uh, Sailing Yacht Zora and Seeker, you know, all of us and uh, Sailing Lady Africa, if you fast forward through them, YouTube actually doesn't really appreciate that. So that's why I do a lot of time lapse and I really appreciate you just letting it run because that actually uh, gives us more chance of being recommended to other channels recommended to other viewers and in fact we're starting to all feature in each other's feeds quite regularly um i think you know i'm one of the lower subscriber characters because obviously uh you know i'm a middle-aged bloke building a boat but at the end of the day uh by watching that channel or that particular video all the way through it really does help with us gaining momentum and getting that uh groundswell effect i guess and that that marathon building that, uh, that, that is YouTube. So thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next week on Life on the Holes. See you later.